Hello everyone, this is Dr. Fryer, and this is part two of the series Gmail Basics, and in this episode we're going to be covering steps six through ten, or I should say skills six through ten, uh, enabling keyboard shortcuts using several settings, including the signature vacation responder and undo send setting, um, reporting phishing and spam, filtering your messages, and then talking briefly about retention and lawsuits. So let's go ahead and get started, first of all, by enabling keyboard shortcuts. So I'm going to switch over here to a, a Gmail account, and I'm going to go into settings, which is here in the upper right corner. So I'm going to click on that gear and go over to settings. And there are a lot of different things that you can enable here. Uh, but I think one of the most important and helpful is called keyboard shortcuts. And so when you scroll down in this main menu, you're going to see the option to turn keyboard shortcuts on. And anytime you make a change here in this area, you're going to want to scroll down and click Save Changes. And then that is going to take effect. Now, if you want to learn more about keyboard shortcuts while we're still there in the Settings menu, you can click on learn more and it's going to take you to this website that is going to tell you about keyboard shortcuts. Now one of the most important things that you want to keep in mind is to is to type the question mark when you have Gmail open to see your keyboard shortcut. So let me click on inbox here and do that for you. So I'm going to press the shift key on the right side of my keyboard and then I'm going to press the question mark. It looks like a forward slash but when you press question mark this opens up all of these different keyboard shortcuts and the reason I want to teach you how to do this is because you can process your email really quickly using keyboard shortcuts and I don't use uh, you know <laughs> probably even a fifth of these I mean there's so many of these um, and and you can learn all of these if you want I mean some of these things like bold and italics and underline those kinds of formatting things are going to be the same as they are when you use Google Documents or whatever word processor word processor you're used to but the ones that I want to show you are uh, these right here for jumping and then a couple of these actions. So I'm going to press the G button and then I to be able to go to my inbox, um, which is helpful. And then I can also um, press these keys like um, when I'm going to be moving in between my messages. Uh, so navigation to next to the next message, uh, K and J. Those move me up and down. Um, in my messages and then over here under X I'm going to select a conversation and then I'm going to be able to um, archive that by pressing E. Remember archive means that I'm going to keep it or I can press the uh, pound sign or what is it, ampersand and I can delete it. So let me show you some of these in action. So let's say that I was here on this email. I can press my G key and then I and navigate back to my inbox and I can now use my J and K to go up and down and then X to select. So for instance, I'm going to just use my keyboard shortcuts. I'm pressing J because these are um, messages that I actually want to delete and see I can skip some if I want to and I'm just pressing X to select these messages and then all I need to do to delete them is hold down the shift key and press 3 so this is for the pound sign and then those messages are deleted so when I press my J and my K I'm moving up and down on these messages and uh, these are the keyboard shortcuts that I frequently use and so I will use these to select messages oftentimes that I want to delete and then I'll go ahead and delete them and that is just fantastic. So that is a little overview of keyboard shortcuts. Again, once you've enabled them, you can press the question mark, which is shift slash, and then you're going to be able to see those and you can experiment using some of those different keyboard shortcuts. Um, another one that I'll use C just to compose a new message. It's just quick, right? You can use your mouse to go to these things, but when you're processing a lot of email, it is fantastic to use lots of keyboard shortcuts. So there you go. Uh, let's next go on to number seven, which is settings. I've already talked a little bit about this because I was just in the settings. But let's go in and uh, take a look at some of those specifically. In fact, we probably should make sure we're going to cover the right ones. We're going to talk about signature, vacation, and undo send. All right, here we go. So we're going to come up here to settings, uh, click on the gear, and go to settings. And now 
Let's talk about vacation responders. So when you are not going to be checking your email for a period of time, you can choose uh, to have a vacation responder on. That means that people are automatically going to get a message from you saying that you are gone and you are not able to check your email. So I could say I'm in Colorado until, this isn't true of course, December 31st, 2019. And so you can choose when you're going to go on vacation. So let's say I was going on vacation on Saturday. And then if I was actually going to be gone that long, which would be an incredibly long vacation, for that entire time, people are going to receive the message that has this subject. I'm in Colorado. And I could say something like, uh, I am away from my email and will check back with you on January 1st, 2020. Everyone who receives uh, or who sends you an email is going to automatically receive this if I choose to save the changes. Now, if I only want people who are here at Cassidy to get that or only people who are in my contacts, I can check those. But if I want everybody to receive it, I'll go ahead and click Save Changes and then that vacation responder is active. Now, it's not active right now uh, because I changed the date on it. But if it was, let's say I set it for today, the 21st, Watch what happens here. Now I have this message up here reminding me that I have this vacation responder on. And I could end that by clicking it right there. Or I can always go back here to settings and change that. All right. So that is your vacation responder. Uh, let's talk a little bit about signature. Signature is something that you probably want to do for sure. And that is going to be the, the little message that's going to be at the bottom of every email that you start. For instance, when I click compose, I've put this as a uh, signature file. So look at that. It automatically says my name. Um, that's not my real email, of course, but I have my Twitter. You can put whatever it is that you want. Um, and here at Cassidy School, for our teachers and our staff, we have a format that people copy and paste and then put in so that it has our logo and links and it, it looks fancy. It's called a signature. And so the place where you do that is right here. If you didn't want a signature, you would click no signature. But again, you're all, always going to have to go down and click on save changes. Um, and then it's going to take effect. Undo send. This is pretty cool. This used to be something you had to add separately as a Google Lab. And so what this allows you to do is decide how many seconds do you have to decide not to send a message. And by default, it's set to five seconds. But let's say I wanted to maximize that and I changed that to 30 seconds. Let's see how this works. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save Changes. And I'm going to press my keyboard shortcut C to uh, do a new message. And I'm going to send an, an email um, here to myself. And I'm going to say test. This is a test. Now, when I click my send, I actually have some time to undo. See right here? If I was like, oh shoot, I forgot to attach the file. I can go ahead and click undo and then it brings it back. Now what that actually is doing is it's delaying the sending of the message. And so you are putting a delay in the sending of your message by changing that. But it gives you an option in case you make a mistake. And sometimes people will you know, accidentally forget to attach a file or something like that. And so you might want to consider changing that. There are a lot of other settings that you can explore here um, and, and take a look at. And I'd encourage you to, to check those out. Um, for instance, this isn't even on the list, but you can choose how many stars you want to have. If you want to have other kinds of um, so other other kinds of icons that are going to be here uh, that you can use to help you label your messages. So when you come back to your inbox, uh, you can click the star. But if you click through it, see how I have multiple choices here as far as labels, all those kind of things you can change in the settings. All right, great. So let's next go on to reporting phishing or spam. This is super, super important. Um, and that word phishing you may not be familiar with, but that comes from the idea of someone trying to hook you with a trick message and trying in many cases to get you to log in and try to send you um, try to get you to give up your credentials like log in and give your password or your email so uh, in this case I um, don't have a phishing message for real all right but let's pretend this one was a phishing message you can go up here to the upper right corner of the message when it's open these three dots some people will call the hamburger and when you click on that notice that there are some choices to report phishing 
or to report spam. You can also block somebody if you need to, uh, and hopefully that won't be the case. You'll need to do that, but if you absolutely don't want to receive messages from someone, you can choose to block them. In this case, if I, if I choose to report phishing, I am training Gmail to say, hey, this is not a good message, and other people shouldn't receive it as well. And here at Cassidy, sometimes we have received messages from people pretending to be our headmaster, our head of school. And so um, you'll also sometimes receive spam messages that you don't want. I'm not going to mark this as phishing because this isn't. This is not something you want to do you know, to a message that isn't uh, true phishing. Um, but you want to uh, be aware that that's the way you do that. And you go ahead and select it. Um, and that's how you report phishing or spam. And that's important. Let's talk a little bit about filtering messages. So filtering messages are really powerful. And I'm going to press my keyboard shortcut uh, G and then I to go back here to my inbox. So one example is I'm going to get a lot of announcements that will be coming um, out about um, from, from Google Classroom. Now you may not want to trash these, but you might want to put these in a folder automatically so that they weren't in your inbox. And this is something that can really help you as you, uh, if you find yourself overloaded with email. And here's how you can do that. Um, the first thing I'm going to do, uh, in this case, I'm going to take this out of the trash. I'm going to remove the trash label. And so when I uh, come over here, I'm going to be able to find that message, um, that Mrs. Fryer sent to this account. And if I would like to add a filter here, right at the top are the three dots. And you can say, I want to filter messages like this. And so you choose whether it's going to be from this particular um, sender. So I could be saying, take every message that's being sent here. Um, in this case, I'm going to uh, use the words new assignment. So whenever I get a, a um, message that says new assignment, I can click on these three dots and say filter messages like these. But instead of saying every time it comes from that person, I'm just going to say uh, it has the words uh, new assignment. Or if I go ahead and put that over here under the subject line. So every time I get something that has a subject new assignment, I'm going to create a filter. And what would I like it to do? Well, in this case, I want it to put a label and I'm going to make a new label uh, called Google Classroom, um, let's just say messages, okay? And I can go ahead and create that. And so it's gonna create that label and, it's, and, and in this case also I could say, um, I could skip the inbox. So it's not going to show up in my inbox, but it's going to go into this labeled box, Google Classroom Messages. And I can go ahead and create that filter. And so now, when new messages arrive um, that have that assignment, or sorry, that have that uh, subject line, those will automatically go into uh, the folder that I've created for new assignments. So that is how filters work. And filters are really powerful. Filters are a way that you can keep your inbox clean by having things automatically process. You want to be really careful not to, um, you know, subscribe to, you know, spam basically, things that you don't want to receive. Um, and you can unsubscribe from things. But when there are things that you need to receive, but you just don't want to see them right away, a filter is a really powerful way to go ahead and move that out of your inbox box so it does not show up there. Instead, it's going to show up over in your uh, labels over here. Okay, so that was a lot on filtering, but that was important. The very last thing we need to talk about are retention and lawsuits. All right, why in the heck is Dr. Fryer talking about this? Well, here in your email, it is really, really important for you to remember that every single thing that you write and that you send is saved and that people can get those things and see those things. You do not have and should not have any expectation of privacy, okay? So no privacy. When you're sending email, that is part of an organization, like for our school, which is called a G Suite domain, all of our email is monitored. And so there's something called Google Vault that 
retains, and that's where the word retention comes from, the email that everybody sends for five years. And so all of your Gmail messages, any chats that you have in Hangouts, if you use Google Groups, the files you have in Google Drive, now we have Hangouts chat, if you've got recordings, all of those things are saved. So think about that. Any message that anybody has ever sent in the last five years at our school or any school that uses Gmail, and this is a policy that most organizations and businesses when you get out of school will have as well, they are going to keep these messages. And why do I say this? It's to just let you know uh, these messages are not private. Um, if and, and, and this is something that organizations have rules about, so it's not like, I think, you know, most organizations, uh, ours certainly doesn't. We don't have somebody who sits around and just reads people's email. But when there's a situation that's come up, when somebody says, hey, that is, you know, something we need to get more information about, and that person is an administrator or a lawyer or a judge, those people can have orders to get all of the email um, that has that you know just like we were making a rule in the filter uh, they could they could choose to get all of your email or all the email that you've sent to a certain person or if you've ever said a specific word they can find all of those emails and they can you know be viewing those so that is the last thing that I wanted to talk about when it came to uh, email was retention and lawsuits. So I hope this has been helpful to you. Um, I would encourage you, if you have not already, uh, to watch part one of this series. And I wish you luck as you continue to use Gmail. Use it powerfully. I've touched on some of the basic different features here, but there's obviously a lot more that you can dive into, especially with the keyboard shortcuts that we talked about here, as well as some of those settings.